Hello, I'm Brandon Martini, a commercial pilot and flight instructor. And I'm Carson Vasquez. I'm a private pilot. And you're listening to the Aviation Mentors Podcast, sponsored by Stratus Financial. So buckle up, because the Aviation Mentors are taking off. Carson is finally back today, and he seems to be feeling a lot better. So I'm really happy to have him back. So I'm not doing this solo anymore, Carson. So thanks for being back. Of course, happy to be back. Uh, it was really weird when I approved those episodes and I heard just you. And uh, at least you kept me in the intro. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, no problem. I, I really thought about cutting you out. And <laughs> hey, we're just going to change the whole podcast to something brand new, just the uh, Brandon show instead of uh, Brandon and Carson. Uh, but I couldn't really do that to him, although I really wanted to. Aviation mentor. Exactly. We would have changed the name a little bit. <laughs> so uh, today, we'll just kind of get going. Uh, today, we're going to talk about some places that we've literally been dying to fly. There's places all over the U.S. and outside the country uh, that are all on everyone's bucket list. So I know Carson's got four of them that are kind of at the top of his list, and I've got four that are on the top of mine. I've been to a lot of airports. Uh, I mean, a lot of airports. And uh, I actually only have one international airport, and that's in South America. I've never landed outside the country. But uh, a few of mine are outside the country. I think one of Carson's is too. So we're going to kind of go through our uh, top four airports that we both want to uh, visit someday, and hopefully we get to visit someday soon. So Carson, what's the uh, first airport on your list? So the first airport on my list is Sedona. Sedona is definitely one of the most beautiful ones you can go fly into. And the airport's right in the middle of the red rock formations. So you get a really incredible view of the surrounding landscape when you go fly into it. And the airport itself, pretty small, uh, pretty unique too. It has these steep cliffs on all sides of it. So definitely a little bit different than what we fly into in SoCal, where you're surrounded by city no matter where you go. Uh, but it's a really pretty one. And it's pretty much along a flight path going directly east from Riverside. And even if it is a little bit out of the way, I think it'd be a pretty cool place to go and stop uh, on a long cross-country flight. You can also go make a weekend out of it, go do um, hiking trails through the canyons, and pretty much do anything you want in that area. So I really wanted to just go make a weekend out of it. So I put this one at the top of my list because I feel like it's a really cool one that I can go and fly into soon and, and knock it off my bucket list this year. I've been to Sedona. It's pretty neat. There's two cliffs on each side, and uh, they've got an awesome little restaurant, and uh, I, I love it. I mean, I highly suggest you guys go there. Uh, anybody else who hasn't been there yet? Uh, take Carson's suggestion and uh, go check it out. It's a really cool place. Uh, the thing on my list, kind of top of my list, what I've really wanted to go to for a long time, I fly all over the US, but I've never really flown outside of it. And I want to fly to the Bahamas. Uh, the Bahamas sound like so much fun to fly to. Uh, I would love to go fly a seaplane to the Bahamas. Uh, that would kind of be like the real bucket list there. I just think the, I mean, the beautiful weather, the beautiful water, uh, everything about it. I mean, and plus, once you land, you're in the Bahamas. Who doesn't want to be there? Um, I would love to go go hang out in some islands and uh, on the days I'm not flying, go sip some Mai Tais or something on, on the beach. Uh, that sounds like a blast. So I would definitely want to go to the Bahamas. That's that's number one on my list. And that one's very achievable. I just need to, to go down to Florida and uh, either one of our listeners maybe can lend me one of their airplanes and we'd go fly together. Or I'm going to call up one of the schools that Stratus works with and uh, and borrow an airplane and go fly over there. I think that would be a blast. I have a feeling a couple of them might let me do it. You know, I, w- I would let you borrow my plane in exchange for some icon time. And speaking of the icon time, just, just hear me out. I have a good plan for this next one. So I really want to go fly in the Florida Keys. So same idea as the Bahamas, except I'm still getting the hang of flying around the U.S. And Brandon's already trying to go outside of it. So we're on different levels here. Uh, I was going through my list of all the places I wanted to go fly. And Brandon's like, oh, yeah, I've been there. I've been there. I've been to that one. I was like, okay, cool. Something that can stay on my list. Uh, makes me feel cool, at least. <laughs> so the Florida Keys, they're super beautiful, uh, super diverse, too. You have everything from the super cool ocean to the beaches. And the water there just looks phenomenal. Uh, not the same kind of water that we have in the Pacific off the coast of uh, California. We always go fly over. And it's a really popular destination for pilots. It's got tropical weather and, again, those beaches. It's also a great spot to go fishing and snorkeling and pretty cool place to go camping, hiking, uh, even bird watching. if you're into that. I like watching them from above them, but, you know, it's cool too. And, of course, the Florida Keys, known for their beautiful sunsets. So going and flying around the Keys during a sunset, it's a really amazing experience. I want to go and have that one. And another awesome destination, uh, pretty close by, is Dry Tortugas National Park. About 70 miles west of the Key West, a uh, remote, uninhabited island. You can only get to it by boat or a seaplane. So here's my plan is I go take the Icon for a week or two, 
and just fly across the you know entire United States and Icon. And Brandon's done it before, and uh, go fly around the Florida Keys and go fly up to the Dry Tortugas National Park. So, Brandon, how do you feel about let me take the Icon? I don't think so, Carson. And it might be a little too slow to get there. You know, I feel like it may have something to do with me not having my seaplane rating yet, but. I also think it's his uh, prized possession, so a little bit of both. Yeah, I think you're gonna you're gonna stay away from uh, the nice little icon, aren't you, Carson? Um, <laughs> uh, I I would love to do that too. I mean, that sounds like an awesome uh, awesome place to go. I would love to go fly in the Florida Keys. It's close to the Bahamas. Maybe I can do make a trip and do both in the same time. You know what? You can just drop me off on your way to the Bahamas. I'll be happy enough. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. The next thing on my list is. In the U.S., actually, Carson, I really, really, really want to go to Kitty Hawk. I want to go to First Flight Airport. Uh, they've got a, a Wright Brothers Memorial over there. I want to see where where kind of the the spark for for the first aviators was was born. And I think it'd be awesome to fly in that state. I've already flown uh, flown flown in that state once or twice before, but I've never flown to that airport. And I don't know why I haven't. I I should have done that. I actually, I got told by one of my friends when I did a, a New York cross country in a Saratoga uh, with a client, I said, uh, I asked, Hey, what are some cool places to go on the way home? And he said, Hey, go check out uh, Kitty Hawk, uh, go see first flight airport. And unfortunately I did not do it. Uh, so that's on my list. And uh, I think that's achievable. I think next year I'm going to be on the East coast for actually it's already next year, isn't it, Carson? Yeah, it's already come by quick. Uh, this year, I'm going to be on the East Coast quite a bit. So maybe I'll take a little trip up there and go check it out. I think it'd be really kind of fun to, to see. It'd be really neat. Carson, what's next on your list? I know you finally got one that is out of the country. Yeah, so I'm not going to lie to myself. It's on the bucket list, uh, a little bit deeper on that list. Um, it's a little bit harder to achieve than you know going to the Keys even. It's Lukla Airport. It's in Nepal. And you actually go fly into some other airport in Nepal. And then you take a little short flight and hop on this one if you're going to Everest. So anyone has gone to Mount Everest and go climb it, they've actually flown to this airport. It's in the top 10 most dangerous airports and number one, actually. Yeah, sorry, Brad has told me it's number one, actually, on that list um, of most dangerous airports. It's got, I think, 11 degree you know, decline. So it goes pretty much straight down when you go land on it. And it's only 1,700 feet, which isn't crazy short, but... It's really short for the high altitude you're already at there. And there's been plenty of accidents, has steep cliffs, very steep cliffs on both sides. Um, I think it'd be pretty cool to go fly into just to say that you've done it. And when you're going to go fly into it, you actually have to get checked out. You have to have, I think, 100 um, short takeoff and landing you know, flights in the last year. And then you have to have 10 flights with an instructor just to fly into it. And that's you're not flying alone into it either. You're flying dual pilot, so it's pretty crazy. And I want to go knock that off my list. Yeah, that sounds like a crazy one, Carson. I don't even know if I want to do that. Yeah, you know, we've landed on shorter runways than that together, but not under those conditions. So I think we could do it. It's only like ten thousand feet. I actually I looked it up, and I didn't think the airport was that crazy. But uh, apparently, it's the most dangerous <laughs> in the world. So I guess I'm wrong. Everyone else is right. Um, no, but it looks it it really does look challenging. Uh, the next airport on mine, I'm going back out of the country again. I couldn't stay here for too long. Um, and it's Princess Juliana uh, Airport in St. Martin. I mean, have you ever seen the videos of people standing outside of the fence and getting blasted by jet blast? I mean, people get hurt doing that. Uh, but people people are hanging on to the fence and like trying to see if they could fly with the jet blast. Like, I don't know if that seems very uh, comfortable, but I think it'd be funny to like fly over a beach full of people that are all drinking at a bar. I mean, they're going to do some stupid things right when you fly over. Uh, I think it would be a blast to go fly there uh, and and land and, and see all these crazy people. Um, I heard rumors that they stopped letting people do it. So I'm I'm hoping that's not true. But I have seen plenty of videos, and I suggest everybody listening who hasn't seen it before, go check out Princess Juliana Airport in St. Martin on YouTube. And it's uh, it's a pretty cool sight to see. And plus, the runway is pretty short, and it's like right next to a beach. Uh, and you can get off the uh, get off the plane and go sip Mai Tais. Uh, who wouldn't want to do that? That sounds like a blast. I think it'd be pretty cool. Uh, not that they're going to get much you know, jet blast to uh, push them away from that fence, flying my little Piper Arrow in there. But I think it'd be a pretty cool one to go fly into. And uh, you know, keeping it a little bit more mellow than the world's most dangerous airport, I really want to go and fly into the Grand Canyon. Uh, I think it'd be pretty cool to go fly over it. There's, I think, six different special flight rule airspaces around it. And just think one or two corridors that you can go fly into uh, to get through it and go check it out. 
So I think it'd be pretty challenging just to navigate that kind of airspace with that much traffic because there's flight tours, uh, aerial tours. Everyone wants to go fly through it when they go by. So I think it'd be a pretty cool one to go see. I'm sure you've been there, right, Brandon? I have flown through one of their corridors and I've flown on the outskirts of it kind of really high when you're flying above it. Grand Canyon doesn't look that grand, but uh, when you're going through the corridor, it still looks pretty big. Uh, so I actually prefer to kind of go land near the airport and go take a, go take a, a car and go travel it and maybe a little hike or something. Uh, but nonetheless, it is one of like the natural wonders of the world and it should be on your list. Carson, it is pretty, pretty cool. My last one that I've got is actually St. Bart's. Another one that's challenging and dangerous and, and I don't know, I think I just want some challenge in my life. Um, it's very short. You land downhill. If you don't land in the first part of the runway, you're, you're more than likely going to go off the end. Again, there's a ton of YouTube videos on this one as well of people just trying to stop. There's one, I think it's a twin. I don't know what kind of twin it is, but he's like floating halfway down the runway. He obviously didn't manage his airspeed properly all the way down. Uh, and he's floating all the way down the runway. And instead of going around, like we've talked about on this podcast several times, he just decided he's going to try to stop. And that was just the most stupid move ever. I mean, just go around, work at it again. It's better than, than going for a swim, getting out of your airplane. That didn't sound fun to me. That guy made the wrong decision on that day. And Hey, we all make bad decisions, but that one ended up wrecking his airplane. I think he ended up surviving and living, but, uh, still was painful to watch. I mean, he didn't, I don't know if he even landed on the first half. He might've landed like three quarters of the way down. It was just not smart. You wouldn't land on any runway three quarters of the way down. You want to land on like the first quarter <laughs> at the very most, <laughs> That kind of uh, wraps it up for me on my my top four. There's hundreds of airports that I would like to go to, and and I've been to a lot of airports that are really special and fun, and I can't wait to talk about some of those on a future episode. But uh, this was a good one, Carson. I, I like the suggestion. It was pretty neat. I think it's a pretty cool one. Um, we'll definitely let you guys know when we start knocking these off our list, and I think in the next couple months or so, we can at least hit two of them, right, Brand Sedona and Grand Canyon should be pretty easy. Yeah, that's pretty simple. We can knock those out. Cool. We'll call it my uh, commercial cross-country. So doing flight training day in and day out, it can get exhausting. Uh, I realized it, brands realized it, and if you haven't hit that wall, you will. And it's not sound too negative because the best cure for getting past that point is giving yourself something to look forward to. So either a fun flight or a bucket list destination, just to remind you why you fly. So go check out these destinations we talked about today. You'll see exactly why Brandon and I love to fly. Absolutely. And uh, if any of you go over there, please shoot us some video or some pictures of some of these airports that you're going to. We'd love to see them. And uh, you can you can even send them to us on Instagram or Twitter, like always, at Mr. Martini Guy, or you can send it to Carson at Carson underscore AV17. And also, we will be at Fasana, we will be at Sun and Fun, and we will be at Oshkosh this year. We're going to be there with Stratus for all three events. And uh, we're going to be at some local air shows as well. So we're going to keep you up to date on, on what air shows we'll be at. But uh, plan on coming and see us at the booth at, uh, at Oshkosh. Probably going to do a couple episodes live if anybody wants to join us and, uh, and hop on. It'd be a lot of fun to meet some of you in person. Uh, so thanks so much for listening today. We really appreciate it. Yeah, those are going to be super exciting to go to. And we'll keep you guys updated and tell you all about them. And as a wrap up for the day, remember, we're here to guide you in your aviation journey. So fly safe and enjoy the ride.